YouTube, what is going on? Happy Monday. My name is Jake Asman. Welcome in to my channel. Today's video, we're going to be talking Jets react to the comments that Greg Van Rotten made to Brian Costello in the New York Post, just about the vibe of the 2021 Jets and specifically what Robert Sala has already brought to the table. Now, if you're new to the channel, all that I ask is if you like what you saw, please subscribe down below. If you are a returning viewer, Please like this video, comment your thoughts afterwards. Certainly appreciate all the support. So I'm coming to you live today from my house on Long Island. Well, my parents' house. I live in Houston where I do uh, local and national radio for ESPN Houston and for Sports Map Radio. But I'm back on Long Island. I'm on vacation this week. So I'm looking around my old room, and I happen to have found my Kerry Rhodes bobblehead from like 2007 or 2008. I mean, the amount of like random Jets merchandise i have around this house is pretty funny so good to be back on long island unfortunately not going to be here when training camp opens for the jets later in the week and they have open practices so i just miss out on getting a chance to interact with some jet fans and watch zach wilson and company up close but hey i will certainly be following the team from afar all right let's get to the comments now that greg van rotten made he basically said hey hope has returned to the jets after robert sala well, was hired by the team. So here's the full quote. We will then react to it and talk a little bit more about the Jets and specifically their offensive line. Quote, last year was tough mentally. It was so stressful for a lot of guys. There were a lot of new players and so much uncertainty. We felt every day that we would get shut down and that made it hard to go to work every day. You're trying to do your job coupled with losing a lot, losing your job. There's turnover and a lot of new faces. They hire Sala, and it just feels like a weight has been lifted and hope has come back into the building. All we ask for is a fresh start in this league, and no one is happier than the Jets. Now we're on page one, so let's write this year's chapter. I think that quote is especially important because the whole approach for the Jets this offseason was basically to flush out the previous regime. Not just Gase, but McCagden as well. And I think that quote is certainly significant because you look at this team and the, the two biggest new faces are at the two most important positions on a football team, head coach and quarterback. So the fact that you really hired in Salah the anti-Gase, and we've talked a lot about this on the show, the fact that you essentially hired that guy, I mean, that automatically boosts morale in the building. There was a negative vibe around the Jets with Adam Gase. You couldn't escape it. It was a cloud that really just was over the entire organization. Now you're bringing a guy like Salah, who by accident is an upgrade over the previous head coach. There's just a different feel. And we're still in the honeymoon period for Salah. I've talked a lot about that here on the channel. But ultimately, the guy is the opposite of Gase. He has infectious energy. He's a great soundbite. He talks about players playing well so they can get paid. Like He's brutally honest about the NFL being a business and can relate to players. I, I think you're talking about the, the right coach at the right time for this organization, not to mention the fact that, once again, the bar is set so low for, for what we're expecting that there's just going to be a built-in grace period. We saw it with Joe Judge and the Giants last year. When Judge replaced Shermer, the Giants started 1-6, 1-7, and, and, and there were many Giants fans that actually felt good about the head coach just because the team was competitive. They weren't getting blown out. Like The Jets were getting blown out the last two years and all their losses. Heck, even some of the wins you know, the Jets would have, they'd squeak one out, but the Jets would never get a laugh. Or when was the last time us Jet fans got to sit back in the fourth quarter with a game in hand that you know you're going to win? So there's just a totally new vibe around this football team right now, and and there should be. It's training camp week. You know, Veterans report soon. There should be a lot of optimism uh, surrounding this football team after the offseason they had. So it's good to see a guy like Greg Van Rotten, who was here last year, who was brought in by Douglas, you know, get a chance to be part of the next step here in this, you know, this purge of the McCagnan era and this purge of the Adam Gase era. And that starts with Sala and obviously the play of Zach Wilson, who is the defining pick of Joe Douglas's football career. If Zach Wilson's good, Joe Douglas will have a job for a long time. If he's bad, then eventually the clock will run out on Joe Douglas because that's how it works in the NFL. You either find your franchise quarterback or sell hope that you're the guy that eventually could pick the right franchise quarterback and the Jets sold hope had this bad season had the second pick in the draft took Wilson 
now it's all on him to take that massive step forward. Some other things just to talk about here with this team. If we're going to talk about Ben Ron, let's talk about this offensive line in general. One of the reasons why Zach Wilson has a great chance, I believe, to win the Rookie of the Year award is the team that he's going to. For one, he's going to be playing week one. And that's huge. Three of the last five rookie of the year winners have been quarterbacks. You have to play week one. You got to play essentially all 17 games. You know, you look at Trevor Lawrence, he's the only other quarterback that was drafted in the first round that's going to be starting from week one on. There's not as much value there with Lawrence, which is why Wilson at plus 900 in some sports books, plus a thousand, great value there. But I also think it's not just that he's going to play. I mean, look at the talent that he has around him. Offensively, the Jets have weapons. You know, you could say Corey Davis, Denzel Mims, Elijah Moore, Jamison Crowder, Keelan Cole is a very good receiving corpse. Do they have that true number one, that, you know, Julio Jones type, that DeAndre Hopkins type? Not necessarily, although maybe a guy like Denzel Mims or Elijah Moore could turn into that player, but Corey Davis is respectable. Jamison Crowder is respectable. Uh, Keelan Cole is respectable. They have good players that Zach Wilson is going to be throwing the football to. Then you factor in this offensive line. And look, Greg Van Rotten is certainly playing for his job this year as this team's incumbent right guard. And you look at the rest of the line, there's certainly maybe a question mark or two with what Connor McGovern can be as a center. But three of the five positions on this offensive line are really good. Morgan Moses never misses games, which is why I love that signing by the Jets. He's durable. And that might be our only concern with a guy like Makai Becton. Can his big body hold up over the course of of a now a 17 game season. So you have Mo- Moses who never misses games. Go look at his uh, game stats. Guy plays 16 games every year. And then you obviously have Becton, who we all know, Jeff fans, has all pro potential. He's certainly going to be a Pro Bowl guy this year. He was last year if he didn't get hurt and he was a rookie. And then you look at left guard. I mean, we're all high on Elijah Vera Tucker. And if there's one thing we trust Joe Douglas to do is to identify offensive line talent. And he proved it with Beckton. And now, you know, you talk to any scout, any front office person, just anyone that follows football, there's not a single person that doesn't like Elijah Vera Tucker as a draft prospect. So this line is vastly improved. So fresh quarterback, fresh offensive lineman, fresh coaching staff. I, there's no reason not to feel optimistic about where this team's at. That doesn't mean they're going to win 10 games and go to the playoffs, but it means there's a real plan in place for this rebuild here. You know, I was on the Turn on the Jets podcast earlier today with Will Parkinson, and he asked me, you know, when can the Jet fan expect playoffs? And to me, it's not crazy if it were to happen in 2021 because you've seen teams go from worst to first a lot in the NFL, and now it's never been easier to make the playoffs with seven teams in each conference getting in. But I think you could point to 2022 as the year where it's like, all right, let's go. Youngest roster in the NFL. They all get experience. Wilson comes in, gets a chance to play. You're feeling good about the draft capital and the salary cap flexibility the Jets have next year. I mean, you're seeing the foundation being laid for um, for the foreseeable future. And that's how it should be. So, you know, I, I like reading all this. Now we get to see how it all unfolds out on the field. But I think if you're a Jet fan, you should be optimistic, right? I mean, it's not necessarily about the wins or the losses. To me, it's more about the progress being made. If we leave this year feeling confident in the head coach and especially confident in the quarterback, then man, that to me is a major win for the Jets and the wins are going to come. I've made this point a lot on the show. You know, if the Jets win six games this year, they triple their win total. Like the bar is really low. I mean, this team was two and 14 last year, but even with the two and 14 record, I think a lot of people maybe don't remember just how many games were lost because of, because uh, of uh, you know inept coaching. I mean, they win the Raider game if Adam Gase is not the head coach, who's trusting Greg Williams to call the Kachunga Blitz at the end there. They win the Patriot game with competent coaching on Monday Night Football. I mean, there's other games we could point to. I just think the Jets are going to be more competitive. Like, they're not going to get blown out. Like, the season is not going to be over by Columbus Day. They're going to be in games. And I think that's what Robert Sala brings. I like the experience on this coaching staff. I'm ready for training camp. Should be a lot of fun. Thanks so much for watching this video. My name is Jake Asman. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe below. Please like this video. Comment your thoughts on what you think the 2021 Jets are capable of, and I will try to react to as many of those comments as possible. You also could follow me on Twitter, at Jake Asman. Follow me down below. Tweet me your thoughts there. Certainly appreciate it. I mentioned it. I'm on vacation this week, so I'm coming at you live from my Long Island house. I'll be back in Houston next week, and I'm going to try and produce some videos throughout the week 
as well here on the channel. Also, many of you have reached out about the Zach Wilson or Elijah Moore jerseys. If you want the link to that jersey, I need you to subscribe to me here on YouTube, follow me on Twitter, and DM me, and I'll send you the link on how you could purchase a jersey of your favorite Jet player for 30 bucks or less and save you a fortune rather than buy the authenticated version from the NFL, which let's be honest, we've been down this road before jet fans. You spend a lot of money on your jerseys and then the players off the team just a couple of years later. So happy to send that link to anyone that reaches out on Twitter at Jake Asman. Have a good Monday, everybody. I'll talk to you later and uh, go jets should be a whole lot of fun content coming out of training camp, which begins just uh, which begins, I guess rookies are there, but you get the point. The veterans are reporting soon and should be a lot of fun. Have a good Monday, everyone. See ya.